expected value. So let's look at the lecture outline. We'll start with the definition, the formula for expected value, or we'll test our understanding. Then we'll look at assumptions underlying expected value operation. Let's quickly look at the definition. So expected value is the weighted outcome of a decision-making process. Okay, so when we talk about weighted outcome, we have various possible outcomes to an event. Each of the events have their likelihood of occurrence. So if we net the two, that will be the weight and that will help us arrive at the point of the decision making. Now, expected value can be used to decide on the viability of an activity. So when we talk about viability, it has to do with either the profitability or the loss of an activity or an investment, the possible outcome or the outcome of one of the options of an activity. Okay, it depends on the objective of what activity that you are talking about. Expected value may not be among the data set used for at times they will give you a probability or a percentage and the probability. When you weight it, it will be outside the list of outcomes that you have been given. An example of an expected value will be in a game of spinners which has eight equal segments. So the eight equal segments can be one of a yellow, two being blue segments, one red segment, and four green segments. So the expected value will correspond to which color that is statistically most likely to result in a, a single spin. So if you want to know the outcome for a single spin, that is the color that will result, okay, you will take the total number of segments that that color has divided by the total number of all the segments of the spin. So for example, if you want to know the outcome of green, the total number of greens we have are four and the total number of segments are eight. So dividing four by eight, it means that the possibility of having a green segment popping up in a single spin is 50%. So if you want to do for blue, which has two segments, you divide two by eight, which is going to give you 25%. Expected values can also be used by investors to determine the yield of their activity, whether positively or to minimize the risk of losing money. So if an investment opportunity has 80% chance of yielding $100,000 profits per annum, and has a 10% chance of leading to a $2,000 loss. The expected value will be multiplying the 80% by the $100,000 and then multiplying the 10% by the $2,000. Then you sum the various products that is going to give you the benefit that the investor is likely to earn. Let's now look at the formula for expected value. It is the sigma P multiplied by X where x is each of the possible outcomes or the events and the p is the probability of each outcome occurring let's test our understanding we are to calculate the expected value of income for this particular salesman so a soft drink salesman has different levels of demand for his sales and probabilities for each level of demand occurring so for a higher demand he is likely to make a sales of 600,000, but a probability of that occurring is 0 0.5. For him making a medium demand where the sales he stands to make is $250,000, the probability is 0 0.4. And if he makes a low demand, which means a sales of $150,000, the probability of that transpiring is 0 0.1. When we look at the solution, we state the formula again, which is sigma p and x where x is the possible outcomes here the level of the sales and the probability of its outcome occurring so when we list the headings we have the level of sales the amount of sales per the level which is the outcome x the probability of it occurring then the probability multiply by the expected value which is the px so for a high level of demand with sales of 600,000, probability as we saw was 0.5. So when we multiply that by the 600,000, we are getting $300,000. For medium, 
sales was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The probability was zero point four, which will give a product of one hundred and forty thousand dollars. That is a three hundred and fifty thousand times the zero point four. Then a low is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars multiplied by its probability of zero point one, which will give the product of twenty five thousand dollars. So when we sum the product of the sales and the probability we are going to get an expected value of four hundred and sixty five thousand dollars meaning the three hundred thousand for the high the 140 thousand for the medium and the twenty five thousand for the low it means that this particular salesman looking at all the outcome and their probability stands to make a sale of four hundred and sixty five thousand dollars put together let's test our understanding again an investment firm is evaluating the expected yield from some investment. For investment A, it could deliver an annual profit of 45% with a probability of 0.85 and a 20% annual loss with a probability of 0.15. With investment B, 70% annual return with a 60% probability and a 35% annual return with a probability of 40%. 35% being negative means that it is a loss. So when we come to the solution, we state the expected value formula again, which is sigma P and X, P being the probability, X being the outcome. The outcome here now will represent the returns on the investment. So for investment A, the profit, which is the level, it will give a return of 45%, which is the outcome. The probability of that occurring is 0.85. The product will give you 38.25%. For the loss, it is 20%, probability being 0.15, and a product of negative 3%. The expected value for investment A now will be 35.25%. That is the sum of the product of 38.25 and negative 3. It means that investment A's return is pegged at 35.25 if all the possible outcomes okay at the rate of expectation when we come to investment b its level for profit is 70 percent probability of occurrence it's 0.6 the product is now 42 percent for the loss is negative 35 percent probability of occurrence is 0.4 product is negative 14 percent that is the loss okay so now its expected value will be 28 percent the sum of 42 percent for profit and the loss of 14 percent okay so comparing the two investment a stands a better chance of yielding more benefits than b looking at its expected value let's now come to the assumptions underlying the operations of expected value expected value relies on the tendency that the decisions of the outcome will be taken many times that will speak to the fact that the various outcome and its probability will all occur for the expected value to make sense. And secondly, it ignores the investor's attitude to risk as it averages all the possible outcomes and their probability that will occur. An investor's attitude to risk can be high, medium, or low, or can be risk averse or a risk taker or risk neutral. So some of the investments, if it has a higher probability of leading to a profit and it has some reasonable level of loss attached to it somebody who is a risk taker will go in for it somebody who is risk averse will stay away from it but expected value will mix these outcomes and get you a rate 